Hey y'all, hi. So today, are you ready for this video idea that I got while I was in the shower this morning? <laughs> today, I'm going to be testing out some of the predicted, projected 2023 makeup trends. I'm going off of an article that I found on Allure because I really like what they are predicting. I'm really picking up what they're putting down. And I'm going to put as many of these trends, there are seven of them in the article, as many of them as my face can bear onto my face. If you think that I'm going to use my existing makeup collection to do this instead of going out and buying new makeup for these trends, then you are correct. And if this is your first time to my channel, then that gives you a little bit of an inkling as to what I'm up to over here. I do review new makeup from time to time. I enjoy that and it helps keep the channel healthy to make some videos reviewing new makeup. But I also really enjoy digging back into my old makeup and I try to keep my personal collection edited down to makeup that I truly love. If you are new and you like this, I hope you will subscribe. I'll remind you again at the end. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. So all that I have on my face right now is a little bit of skincare that I put on this morning and some green color corrector. Without it, my skin is quite red. And because I have olive undertones to my very pale skin, using green color corrector really helps both balance out that redness and bring my skin tone closer to its actual tone. I like this one from Exa Beauty. I wanted to give myself a neutral slate for applying the predicted 2023 skin trends. And that is what I'm going to try to do first. So so in the introduction to this Allure article, which I will, of course, link down below, there are a couple of references to skin. One sentence says that there's going to be a bit of borrowing from 90s makeup. We're going to steal that fresh skin from 90s makeup. And further down, it says we're going to see a huge transition away from polished and perfected makeup to bare skin and lived in eyes, which I really love. And we'll get to that later. And at the end of the introduction, it says now is the time to embrace your features your skin, your face. And then the very first trend that this article covers is this trend of bare skin. It says faces are meant to be seen. Base makeup formulas will start to take a step away from heavy texture. I absolutely love this. Then it says people are using more tinted serums, tinted moisturizers, and tinted SPFs instead of heavy matte foundations. And that I have a little bit more of a struggle with. I absolutely love the look of bare skin. I am talking about it all the time trying to even out my complexion without putting anything on my skin that you can actually see. However, I need a little bit more coverage than a tinted moisturizer or like a tinted SPF product can give me. So I usually achieve this bare skin but even complexion look through a combination of very thin layers of base makeup and spot concealing. And I'll demonstrate that in a minute, but that's not all when it comes to skin. Further down in the article, we have uh, a trend they're calling hyper glow. So iridescent. It's downright angelic. And they're talking a little bit about highlighter, saying actually that bronzer is going to take a step back and that it's going to be more about that glow. But the pictures that go along with this, it's like absolutely drenched skin. So not just highlighting in the usual places, but making your skin literally look watery, wet all over. And I feel like this has some to do with the way that you highlight towards the end of your makeup routine, but it also has to do with the way that you apply your base makeup and what base makeup you choose at the beginning. So I am basically going to take on both of these at once. For my base, I'm going to mix some products together, trying to keep it pretty sheer, making sure to add the drop of coverage that I know that I need. And then I'm gonna go in and spot conceal because I know that I can't cover these spots with the sheer shiny makeup that these trends are implying that I should be using. I don't own any skin tints because I don't like them. So I'm gonna kind of mix uh, a custom one and one that has a heavy dose of that wet look do. I'm gonna start with some of the Natasha Denona Skin Glass. I'm adding in a pump of Auric Glow Lust in Morganite, a pump of the House Labs Triclone Foundation in this pure white shade, and a little bit of the RMS Beauty Re-Evolve Foundation. This is a perfect shade match for me, so it's going to help make my mix the right color, but it's very full coverage, so I'm not going to add too much in. All right, mixing it all together. I'm going to start with as little as possible, basically. I definitely don't expect to use all of this, and I'm going to rub it in with my hands, which is one of the most reliable ways to get a really skin-like finish from your base. 
I'm liking the feel of it so much that I, I want to keep adding it. I'm surprised by how much I keep layering it on. It's layering really well with itself. And up close, it's truly undetectable on my skin. Like you can't see it, which makes sense given what it was that I mixed together and how little of the actual coverage product I added. Yeah, my skin really looks like my skin up close. It's definitely given me a glow. And it also, I think, has brightened my face a little bit, made my face more the color of my neck and my the backs of my hands and, you know, the the rest of my body. So this was a great success, but to be clear, this is just me messing around with what I happen to already have. It seemed like it would work to achieve these ends. These are great products, and if you have a hole in your collection and one of these can fill that hole, I'm glad to be able to introduce that product to you, but the point is not to go out and buy these four products and mix them together just like I did to follow this trend. The point is to do what I did, which is to go to my vanity and go through and be like, hmm, I wonder if I mix this and mix this, if I could get Get that effect. There are hundreds of products on the market that when mixed together will do what these do when they're mixed together. It doesn't have to be these. So I'm resisting the temptation to do any kind of contouring, like further brightening under the eyes to kind of flatten out the slight mottled effect of real skin that's still there and in doing that shape the face. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let the way that the different tones of my skin are sort of, are sort of like laying across the planes of my face. I'm just going to let that be but I am going to go in with a little, little bit of spot concealing on the spots that are showing through that concoction. All right, so in person, my skin looks like a little glossy, but coverage-wise, I really just look like a normal person, like not a person wearing a bunch of makeup, not a person who carefully applied makeup, but someone who just happens to have better skin than I actually do have. If anything's detectable, it's that kind of glossiness. And speaking of that glossiness, I'm going to take it down just a little bit because I'm not really a spring chicken. Some of the contours of my face, I feel, aren't the most flattered by extreme shine. I'm going to leave it on most of my face, and I'm going to use a powder that has a little bit of glow in it rather than a really mattifying powder. So this is the Shantikai Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder. I'm just going to put it in my marionette lines right between the eyes, a little bit right under the eyes. I'm going to let my skin look a little bit damp everywhere else. Okay, I'm really into this. I would just go out like this, I mean, on a day where I really don't want to look like I'm wearing makeup, but I do want to give my skin a little bit of help, maybe brush up the brows a little bit, but then go out like this, I would do that. I love this for a trend for 2023. Really natural, really wearable, approachable, great. With the next step, however, I think we're going to get a little bit less, I think a little bit less approachable, perhaps maybe a little less wearable, depending on what you're going for. The next step has to do with brows. So the Allure article says brows are destined to peak in the next 12 months. But what does that mean? Does it mean they'll go downhill after that? I'm not sure about that. I feel like somebody didn't really consider how that sentence would read. But what they're trying to say is that eclectic arches were a model's best accessories on the spring 2023 runways. One of the directions in which we could go here would be the bleached brow direction, and I did consider that. And actually, I think what I'm going to do will kind of embrace that a little bit. The article saying that bleached brows or sort of doing something to downplay or almost erase your brows is becoming more and more common. Interesting interesting, interesting. They also talk about lifting your brows to have them be a couple of shades lighter, which is really a different direction than the one that we've been going in. I definitely have been darkening my brows. I dye them. They're naturally a bit more blonde, like more invisible than this. And I dye them to be darker and also kind of an ashier shade than they are naturally. Honestly, because when they're really red looking, I feel like it makes my hair look like the color is fake. It's weird. Whereas if my brows are a bit ashier, then it's easier to tell that my hair color is natural. So at the tail end of the brow segment of this article, it says, for a high impact moment that you can take off at the end of the night, full on bedazzled brows are a thing too. And there are some pictures of models with glitter in their brows. And then further down in the article, we have a trend that they're calling eccentric accents. So some of the eccentric accents that Allure gives as examples, color blocked shadow in neon colors, hot pink blush on the cheeks, like really bright blush draping, electric orange eyes, they're invoking the color of the year, Viva Magenta, and calling back to the dopamine glam trend from last year. So really bright statement things and non-natural makeup things that are kind of off the beat 
beaten path and make a little artistic statement. I actually feel like the bedazzled brows kind of could fall into this category as well. So I think the statement brow, the interesting brow, the unusual brow kind of dovetails with this eccentric accent trend. And that's why I decided to go for an eccentric brow. And once I started thinking about those bedazzled brows, I just couldn't stop. I have never done this before, but I am going to put glitter in my brows. I brought these two liquid products, the Urban Decay Heavy Metals Liquid Glitter Liner, and then this liquid eyeshadow from Lethal, which is really shiny and kind of sheer. And I also brought this old pot of Slay Fire glitter in the shade Sully. This is supposed to be a glitter gel and it does still have some adhesive properties, but I'm not sure that it's enough to really get it to stick into my brows. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I think I'm gonna start with the Lethal one because I think that this, given how pale it is, might actually do something to sort of semi-bleach my brows, like make them sparkly and also make them less dark. And I think that it'll also help set them in place. I'm actually completely out of brow gel right now. The Patrick Ta one that I was using, has, I used it up basically. Whatever was left has gotten too gummy to use and I haven't replaced it yet. So I'm using this liquid eyeshadow instead. Okay, I feel like that did do everything that I said that I hoped that it would do. It shaped my brows and kind of stuck them into shape. My brow, I mean. It did sort of lighten it, right? It dulled a little bit the effect of the dark color of the hairs and it made it a little bit shiny, but it's not high impact enough for me. I want the shape to be a little bit more defined and I want the glitter to be a little more shiny, like really clearly, obviously shiny. I'm gonna go ahead and catch up the other side and then I'm gonna go in with either one or both of the other two glitters, which are both more glittery. This is a very finely milled sort of shine goo. Really pretty effective though at shaping them and holding them in place. And it is a little bit of the bleached effect, it really is. I could go for this, for just this, if I wasn't so like hot on this trend and trying to do the most with it. I'm gonna go with the, uh, the Urban Decay Heavy Metal next. Oh yeah, I can already tell this isn't gonna be enough. I need the chunky, I need the slay fire. It added more, especially in person, but I want even more. I want them to look like bedazzled with glitter. So before those two dry down too much. I'm gonna go in with this little like flat shader brush and the Slay Fire glitter. Yeah, that's kind of getting me there. So this is the fully bedazzled brow and that I haven't added the last layer of glitter into. Okay, here's what I have to say. I'm shocked by how wearable this feels. Part of me, as I'm doing it, I'm like, this feels like something a drag queen would do. Like this is what I would do if I were a drag queen and I really like that. But then the result, especially on my bare face, it doesn't actually look that costumey to me. I mean, you will have to tell me what you think. The concept is, it's like once you understand the concept and you're like, oh, there's glitter in her brows, then it's like, oh, LOL, it seems hammy. But it's weird. It's like, it seems hammy in theory, but I actually feel like visually, it's not the most hammy thing I've ever had on my face. The question for me is if I keep all of the rest of it kind of wearable, like how wearable is this gonna end up feeling overall? How realistic is it that one might just choose to do this from time to time? So I'm gonna go into the eye makeup portion of this trend exploration with that in mind, the desire to kind of not go super overboard on anything else so that I can really feel the potential of these glitter brows throughout the look. So Allura says that the eye makeup trend for 2023 is grunge. With the return of smudged, lived in eyes, messy makeup will be making a strong reemergence. I love it. But it's not just about messiness. It's I feel like it's more about imperfection being an indication that you're really living in and feeling your makeup Makeup, that it's like you and your skin and your makeup. Imperfection is the secret and precision is irrelevant. They're talking about smudged black shadow, kind of smudged eyeshadow with an avant-garde stripe of silver across the lids. And then all of this edginess is balanced out by your base makeup or lack thereof. So by your very real looking skin. So one direction in which I could go with this would be that sort of irregular, messy take on a smoky eye. And I brought the Victoria Beck Beckham Lid Luster and Onyx down here because I thought that I might do that. But now that I've got these glitter brows on and I don't want to go too hard on the eyes, I don't want to push it over into that costumey place, I'm going to try to stay lighter on the lids. And I think that what I'm going to do, well, first I'm going to prime my eyes. I think I'm going to try to use a combination of Urban Decay Space Cowboy and the Victoria Beckham Bronze Eyeliner. Oh, and I also brought, this will definitely work, the Surat Beauty Smoky Eye Baton, which has this 
eyeliner on one side and then on the other side, like a smudge stick that dips into eyeshadow. And it is a, a very like greasy, damp looking thing. I'm actually gonna start with this. I'm gonna put this in my water line and on my lash line too, but you know, clearly in a really messy way. And now I'm gonna go in with the smudge stick and smudge it. I'm gonna take the Victoria Beckham liner in bronze and kind of mix it in with that to sort of lighten up the color. I'm gonna blend all of that out with a little pencil brush. So that's kind of nice just how it is. And it's definitely imperfect. It definitely looks like some of the things that we've seen on the runways, but I want to just tone it down a little bit uh, just to keep it from being too, too, too dark because already I kind of liked the way that the glitter brows looked when I had nothing on my eyes more than I like this. I'm gonna try to balance it out by using the high shine, the reflectiveness of Space Cowboy to lighten it basically to put like a veil of bright shimmer over and make it less dark. Yeah, see that's on that lid. I feel like it's bringing out some really interesting tones and everything, making it all look less contrasty with the rest of my face and also giving it sort of that greasy look. I actually like the way that layering is looking so much that I'm going to use some of Space Cowboy on that same pencil brush and uh, layer it over what's underneath my lash line as well. All right, now I feel like we're looking really lived in, like lived in, partied in, slept in. I love it. Yeah, I really, really love that. 2023, I'm here for you. And as if that weren't enough, Allure says that the lash trend is going to be layers and layers and layers of mascara. So basically the gunky splink splink spider leg mascara that I've been loving for a long time. Recently I've been into a little bit wispier, fluffier, more natural of a lash. You know what? I don't know if I want to go that hard because again, I'm trying to keep it looking not so effortful. So I'm going to say, I see you, Allure, I see you saying that liberally applied double dose mascara, high impact, layered to look like false lashes, etc., is the trend. In this case, because I'm building a look, I'm going to try to maybe go a little bit more than like a, a wispy lash, but a little bit less than that, because I really like how it looks now, and I don't want to make it look too makeup-y from here. It's not as though Allure is suggesting either that you apply all of these trends at the same time. And on most of the runway models, that, that's not what they're doing, right? They're like picking one. So I've kind of picked my main ones and I, I'm not going to enact the lashes one as much as I could be doing. But we've all been informed that that's what the trend is supposed to be. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. It's a fairly undramatic lash for me. If I hadn't done the glitter brows, I would be going harder. Although, you know, this Make Beauty, I'll show you what I've been using. A lash prototype from Make Beauty. When you wipe the brush off, it does give kind of a false lash effect because it really builds like fluff, fluffy volume. It just, it's the natural false lashes, like the kind of false lashes that are really, really fluffy and even and natural looking. So at this stage, I feel like I have actually successfully put on the kind of face that we've been seeing on the runways and that this article is exciting in predicting these trends. And I feel like if I were to do too much more, if I were to layer on more of the trends, it would start taking away from that success. So I'll quickly tell you what the other options would have been. So one of them is like a really, really lacquered, shiny vinyl lip, which isn't actually my favorite kind of lip product, a, a high pigment and really, really high shine product. I find them messy, difficult to control throughout the day. So I don't actually have anything like that. So that's an easy skip for me. But actually we've done all of the others, right? It was real skin with a hyper glow. So those were the first two. Fancy brows or bleached brows, right? Like distinctive different brows, that was the third one. Oh, and in that same step, I knocked out the eccentric accents trend. The fifth one was the grungy, lived in eyeshadow. The sixth one was the really gunky false lashes mascara, which I didn't really completely do. And then the seventh one is lacquered vinyl lips, which I'm not going to do. That's all seven trends. I don't think I'm going to apply any blush. I think that the only thing I'm going to do on my cheeks is to put on a little bit more cream highlight, right? To like add to that drenched look. But part of what's making the brows wearable for me is that there isn't a lot of sculpting and color and shading going on on the rest of my face. So I'm just using 
using this old, sadly discontinued e.l.f. lip and cheek palette, and it's got a really greasy looking cream highlight that layers well over what's here. Yeah, so that's looking even more like that wetness from the runway, but without making the brows and the eyes less wearable, I feel. I do think I need to put something on my lips. I still have the Amico Lay Lip Treatment Oil down here. I'm gonna use this just to take away that like completely bare look for my lips. I feel like it goes with the vibe because it's shiny and the slight warmth in that brown is kind of echoing the warmth in that orangey undertone that came out in Space Cowboy when I buffed it onto my eyes. So I feel like that's pretty good, but it's not taking away from what else is going on. The lips are definitely not the star of this show. Oh my goodness, what do you think? Sometimes this kind of thing goes completely off the rails and I was sure that today was going to be one of those days because of the glitter brows. But let me tell you, I feel as though it has not. I feel as though we're on the rails. We're on the rails sailing into 2023. Do you agree? Am I delusional? <laughs> I can't wait to ask Joe what he thinks when he gets home. I'm gonna be like, do you like my makeup? What do you think he's gonna say? I bet he's gonna cite some movie. He's gonna be like, oh, it's very Blade Runner view, or it's very, what movie do you think he's gonna say? It's very X, some show or something he's gonna say. And I'm gonna be like, no, it isn't. It's me in this moment. This is me now. What if I just came on camera with glitter brows and didn't say anything about it? All right, I'll move away from discussing the glitter brows. And, and here's the what I actually think. My actual feeling, my strongest feeling is that these eyes, this eye look, yes, Yes, I love it so much. I feel like this is a, it's kind of like an updated version of what I often do. The difference is that I didn't work so hard at bringing the shadow up onto my brow bone to deepen my hooded eyes. So I think my eyes probably look a little bit less perfectly flattered than they usually do when I'm careful about that, but more lived in, more natural. And you know, because of that, it's more leaning into my natural face shape. It's like, this is what my eyes look like. I'm not trying to fight it. And that's very apparently on trend. And I feel, I feel great in it. I feel great specifically in this eye makeup. So I'm very pleased to have discovered this, like throwing this look together, trying to imitate the trends with my beloved tried and true products, because I feel like this isn't going to be the last time that I use those three products together to create this exact eye look. And the skin, I mean, of course I love that. I love that it's trending to have your skin look like your real skin. I also feel like it's more aligned with the way that a lot of people actually wear makeup. Like there are people who have been doing this the whole time that Full Coverage Foundation was trending. It's just a little bit more accessible, relatable, again, wearable in the everyday, in different professions, different walks of life. I just think nothing but good can come of bare skin trending in 2023. So that's the other one that really excites me. Listen, I appreciate you so much for watching and I'm going to remind you here now that if you're new and you haven't subscribed, this is your moment. I really hope that you will. Do let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know which of these seven trends is one that you are absolutely going to employ. And you know, let me know what you have in your makeup collection already that you know that you can use to enact this trend. Because I know you have something. Thank you again for watching, liking, commenting. I really appreciate you spending this time with me. And I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. Thank you.